Hi everybody and welcome into the Sun Devil Source post game show. I'm Ethan Tuttle joined alongside Chris Cartman. We just wrapped up the Territorial Cup here at Arizona Stadium. Arizona State suffered a 38-35 loss to the Wildcats. It was the first loss in the Territorial Cup to the Wildcats for any of the players on Arizona State's roster. Chris, what are your initial takeaways after this game? Look, we kind of knew that this was going to be a game with a lot of offense. Um, these games tend to have random sort of things happen. We've covered a lot of them. And this, this year it was uh, a number of just huge explosive plays by both teams, uh, kind of a slugfest. And then there were turnovers. There was a lot of chippiness. There was uh, you know, pushing and shoving and, and, and pulling guys off the pile. There was Sparky punching Wilbur and uh, just a, a crazy sort of stuff that happened and yet not crazy for the Territorial Cup. Um, not surprised to see it end in a close game. Not surprised to see Arizona win. Um, and very clearly, you saw a lot of the themes from ASU season appear again in this one that ultimately was a, a supremely disappointing year for ASU fans. Xavier Valade came into this game having really a heck of a season, Chris, for the Sun Devils being the leader in the backfield. But today it was Trenton Bourget who shined for the Sun Devils. He had a terrific game uh, uh, in the pocket. What was kind of the surprise, though, maybe out there? Were you expecting more of the run? Were you expecting the pass? Uh, kind of how did that play out in your eyes? I think Arizona decided that it was going to commit to the box and say, hey, if Trenton Bourget and the passing attack of ASU can beat us, then so be it, right? And Bourget had a, a really great performance. He's going to be disappointed with the way it ended, obviously. Um, turned the football over last two times that ASU had the ball. He had an earlier interception that, that I think was one that he would want to have back. But he completed a huge 75 or something percent of his passes. Uh, ASU's receivers had just an, I can't even tell you how good of a game that it was. There was almost no drops. Um, you had Jalen Conyers show that he's one of the best tight end prospects in the country. Uh, Geo Sanders was a, was a tremendous uh, weapon for ASU in this game. Um, we just saw tough catch after tough catch. Brian Thompson didn't have a bunch of catches, but the ones that he did have were contested over the middle. Um, so this was a great performance by ASU's passing attack. Yeah, Xavion Valley didn't get the ball as much as I expected that he would. I think that was sort of a product of the way that the opponent tried to, to play the Sun Devils. He still had 97 rushing yards. He hurt his ankle a little bit at the outset of the game in the first quarter, was able to kind of come back, so it didn't bother him uh, subsequently. ASU didn't really lose, though, because of its offense, irrespective of maybe a couple of those turnovers. Michael Wiley coming in for the Wildcats, Chris. I mean, we talked about Xavier Valade and how great he's been playing for the Sun Devils. Wiley, only 500 rushing yards on the total season coming into the Territorial Cup, over 200 yards on the ground today for U of A. Any surprise there uh, out of ASU's run defense, and what were you seeing there? Well, look, uh, ASU gave up 400 rushing yards to UCLA and, and got destroyed on the ground by Eastern Michigan earlier in this year. We know this is a bad ASU run defense. And, and so once again, they were just getting gashed. Uh, Arizona had 13 explosives uh, on the game. I think ASU had given up nine or more um, explosive plays in each of its last five outings. Um, a pretty embarrassing performance when you look at it at the point of attack for ASU's defensive line, giving up huge uh, holes in some of the interior gaps, linebackers not being able to get over there and fit against the run, including uh, six-year senior Kyle Soli, fifth-year senior Merlin Robertson. It's kind of an embarrassing performance uh, when you look at it for a Territorial Cup game against an offense that really hasn't actually done that much running the football this year. Jaden Delora only had 200 passing yards for the Wildcats, and yet they still ended up with 13, 35 points uh, in this game. I, I just, um, it, the, the game was a microcosm of the season for ASU with just uh, really bad defensive play kind of throughout and then not being able to do anything about it here in their last game, even the one that, that kind of meant the most to them. And run defense wasn't the only problem for the Sun Devils. They also had some problems with the turnovers as well. They had five tonight here in Arizona Stadium. Uh, do you think that was more factored in just because of, you know, down the stretch, uh, it got loud here in Arizona Stadium, obviously one of the loudest environments ASU's probably seen all season, or do you think that just was mainly just errors and mistakes that the Sun Devils were making flat out? Well, the Bourget had a bad one uh, early. I think the situation, uh, you know, 
wasn't one that you want to get an interception. And then, then um, you know, it was like a first down. He threw the ball uh, in, in uh, you know, kind of in, in Arizona territory, uh, you know, with two, two defensive backs kind of in the area. That really shouldn't have happened. Then you had Tevin White who got reps uh, because Daniel and Gata didn't play in this game, trying to, like, do a second effort for extra yards when you got to realize that, that keeping, keeping secure of the ball is the most important thing. Uh, and, and he's gonna, it's a learning moment, but it's a tough one because it was also on a first down. Then you had Javen Jacobs uh, trying to field a, a bouncing punt, and he gave, he gave that one up, which set up a short field opportunity for Arizona. And then you had Trenton Bourget get hit multiple times uh, very quickly in the pocket on blitzes, corner blitz. Uh, f was a fumble that Arizona recovered. And, and then uh, on the ASU's final drive, which was the, the, the one after the fumble, uh, his arm got hit and the ball floated and he got intercepted. So the last two, Arizona was almost like just trying to go all out pressures. I, I, you, you can kind of understand the way why those would happen, but the three earlier ones I think were very significant miscues that shouldn't have happened. And had they not happened, ASU probably wouldn't have even been in that situation in, late in the fourth quarter. A number of Arizona State seniors talking after the game as well. Just you could see it in their faces. It was a clearly disappointing loss, obviously for the Sun Devils. But uh, kind of what were your takeaways on maybe some of the seniors in there, what they had to say, and then interim head coach John Aguano as well in his final game of the season. There were tears, right? Sean Aguano, very emotional. I thought uh, rarely, if ever, have I seen a, a head coach be that emotional after a game. He's, he's that type of a guy, but knowing that this was probably the only opportunity that he's gonna get to be ASU's head coach and with the, the record that ASU had of, of um, you know, winning every game 2017 until now and how disappointing this season was, the opportunity to try to give, give some, you know, uh, some emotional uplift to, to the ASU fan base, for that to not happen was very devastating uh, for him. And he's a local guy, coached at Chandler High School for a lot of years. He cares so much about the players. Uh, we saw Kyle Soley just I mean, he was, he looked devastated by this. You know, the first yeah. time he'd been 5-0 and in his career, first time he loses to Arizona. Uh, he knows that it was ASU's defense that let the team down time and again throughout the season. And he's out there with 100-plus tackles, leading the Pac-12, and yet he's still not able to do enough from a leadership standpoint or whatever it was that, that needed to happen to sort of fix these issues that they had. ASU's offensive players, I don't think that they looked as uh, devastated, and I think pro probably that's because they know that they went out there and had a pretty good performance overall. I, they, I mean, you can't really say that Geo Sanders or Xavier Valade, who spoke with the, with, with the media, um, have any responsibility in this in the, this outcome. And Trenton Borgay, I mean, I'm sure he wants to have some throws back. The guy played really well, and he played his butt off. So um, they talked about just kind of uh, trying to take something from this that they're going to be able to utilize going into the future. And that's kind of what you would want to see from players and, and, and just, it, just anyone in life. Kyle Soli even said, hey, like um, for the future, Sun Devil fans and the community, they have to sort of rally and not let something like this happen again. He's still thinking about like the future, even though he, his career is over. Yeah, Arizona State's worst winning percentage since 1946. And like you were saying, Kyle Soli kind of preaching that you know championship mindset in every single department at Arizona State. So now moving forward, interim head coach Sean Aguano, um, you know, kind of had his final speech today. Uh, we don't know what 100% what's going to be happening moving forward, but kind of what's your take on all that and the coaching situation ahead? And what do the Sun Devils have to do to get things back on track the way they used to be? Well, Guano said he's not stupid. He knows he's not going to be the head coach at ASU. They didn't get it done in the win column, and it's a, it's a win business is what he said. Uh, he was asked whether or not he could see himself continuing on at ASU in some capacity. He's referred to himself as an Arizona guy. He said that he would like to, you know, um, but there are going to be maybe other opportunities out there. So he's going to probably have to evaluate the situation. I think it makes a lot of sense why somebody would want to keep Sean Aguano in a assistant head coach capacity or some other sort of capacity. Uh, let him recruit the state. Uh, there's, there's a lot of value that he still brings, even though definitely he's not going to be the head coach. Not, we're not going to be the offensive play caller, I'm reasonably um, sure. Um, Geo Sanders and, and Trenton Bourget talked about um, using this as an emotional sort of springboard into the future, right? Um, you, you gotta you gotta soak this in 
understand how this felt and then try to take that and utilize that uh, so that you make sure that you don't have a letdown this offseason in training. They're going to have a new coach. They're going to have a half new roster or maybe more than a half new roster. There's tons of things that have to get done uh, the next 90 days um, for the new regime. And then beyond that, and those guys are going to have an extremely prominent role in shaping what that looks like, I think, if they want to, uh, and taking over the mantle from Kyle Soli and, and some of these other seniors, uh, Xavion Valley, the guys who did everything the right way and also led uh, through their words in addition to their actions. So um, we're going to be covering it. Absolutely. We'll be continuing to bring you all the news as it comes out here at Sun Devil Source. Thanks again for checking out another one of our post-game shows. He's Chris Cartman. I'm Ethan Tuttle here at Arizona Stadium, signing off.